What's going on YouTube? This is Jabber Tech, and how often do you hear me tell you go buy a cheaper variant versus the more expensive variant? Well, I'm here to tell you exactly to do that. If you're in the market for a great pair of earbuds, if you're in the market for Pixel Buds specifically, go for the A series and not the 2020 more expensive $180 version. The $99 Pixel Buds solve a lot of problems I had with these. Now, you might not have those issues. I'll go over some of the issues that I had in just a little bit, but I really like the A-Series. Google has really fixed what they needed to fix, and the sound quality is something that I personally enjoy. I think it's a well-balanced sound quality, super comfortable buds, and of course, you have the Google Assistant in your ear. Who doesn't want to hear Google every day? Let's go ahead, check out the A-Series together. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about them. This is everything that comes in the box. So you do get a USB-C cable for charging. You also get a couple extra ear tips. For those of you that like to read, you can do yourself a favor and read these manuals, but pairing is super simple. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. And these are the Pixel Buds. So let's just go ahead and take a look at them. Super simple, guys. You can see right over here on my Pixel, it already recognized that I have some buds that I might want to connect to this device. So let's just go ahead and click on Setup. It is really that simple. Google's definitely simplified this process. Let's just take a look at these two buds. Again, if you're in the market for some brand new earbuds, if you're in the market for some Pixel Buds specifically, I really recommend the A-Series. Now, you might wonder, how come I don't recommend the 2020 model here? Well, that's just because I've had a lot of connectivity issues and I know a lot of other people have. I've kind of narrowed it down to the fact that I live in an urban environment and there's so much interference going on that these Pixel Buds would lose connection, they drop out, the left would stop working while the right would continue working, etc., etc. They just didn't have an overall great connection to my phone, nor did they have a great connection between the buds. But I always kept these in my ear because having the Google Assistant in my ear, just being able to say the OKG keyword and having my assistant pop up was something I really enjoyed. So even though I had a lot of issues with these, these were still my favorite buds. These were still the buds that I chose over any other buds out there. Now the Pixel Buds Series A solved all of those issues. There's a new chipset in here and they've really, they've really worked on connectivity. With Bluetooth 5, I get a super strong connection and you can use one over the other independently. So you can keep one bud in the case, listen to your music, listen to your podcast with the other bud. Or of course, you can take both out and listen to your music in stereo. Now a couple differences between the A-Series and the more expensive sibling here. The A-Series are basically all plastic, so you can see that here. And I actually like this color. Let me know what you think about this color. Whereas the more premium Pixel Buds were, were really like a metal-ish type of feel. I believe they had some metal. If you take off this ear tip, you can see that metal tip right over there. So these definitely had a more premium feel in the hand. And, and honestly, I don't really have a problem with the Pixel Buds A being all plastic. Another thing that I really like about the Pixel Buds is the fit. For my ears, they fit perfectly well. They never fell out during running, walking, hiking, whatever the case is. Just hanging out in my living room, they never fell out. And I also have to give Google credit because it's a little bit more of a plastic build. It's just a tiny, tiny bit lighter. So you're not going to get any fatigue wearing these ones. You're not going to get any fatigue with the other Pixel Buds either. But I do like the fact that they're a little bit lighter. So for me personally, I do not mind that they're a plastic build. I actually I actually commend Google for it because they're giving us a lighter earbud without sacrificing any of the sound, fit, or comfort. And another thing that I always liked about the Pixel Buds guys is the sound. I believe Google has really fine-tuned the sound. No matter what you listen to, now I listen to country, I listen to jazz, I listen to hip-hop, I listen to EDM. I'm all over the place when it comes to music, and I always found that the Pixel Buds gave me a very pleasing sound, especially if you put that bass boost on. So if you like a little extra bass like I do, putting that bass boost on will actually give you a lot more bass and not really make the mids or the highs suffer. It really is a very well-balanced sound. That's why I kept these in my ear for most of the time. Now, speaking of the Pixel Buds A once again, there's a couple differences between this and the previous model. Again, it is $99, so there is no wireless charging in here. You also don't get some features like the swipe gestures that were found on the original Pixel Buds, meaning you can't just swipe on the earbud to increase or lower the volume. But again, just say the OKG keyword and you'll be able to ask your assistant to raise or lower the volume that way. Even though the earbuds do not have that swipe gesture to change the music, you still do have some gestures in here. And it is very simple. It is very easy to do. Single tap is going to stop your music, as you can see right there. Tap again and it's going to start playing your music or simply take these out of your ear if you want to have a conversation. It'll pause the music that way. You can double tap to go to the next track or you can triple tap to go to the previous track. So again, even though we don't have that swipe for volume, which I definitely like, you still can control your music from the buds. So no issues with that. 
IPX4 means you can run at the gym, you can get caught in a rainstorm, and you're not going to have any issues at all. If we take a look at the app really quickly, what I like about Google's Pixel Buds again, I thought the sound is very well balanced no matter what you listen to. Whether it's country, hip-hop, EDM, you're going to get a very nice sound and a high volume as well. These get super loud. I never had to push them past the 80% 80, 80 mark unless I really wanted to hear my favorite song and make my ears bleed. But that's a story for another day. What I like about the bass boost on the Pixel Buds A series is that it, it really doesn't take away from the mids or the highs. It just gives you that little bit extra oomph that you need with EDM or hip-hop and you still can enjoy the music the way the artist intended you to. So I'm really happy that Google did it the right way. They're, they're just not pumping in bass at expense of the mids or the highs. So again, a well all around balanced sound. And I'm the audiophile guys. I just listen to music every single day. One thing that's on the Pixel Buds A series is called this adaptive sound. And based on your environment, it's gonna increase or decrease the volume. So if you go into a train, for example, and you're riding along, it's gonna naturally increase the volume, basically without you having to do anything and without you really noticing, because again, based on that ambient noise around you, Google just does it so subtly that you don't really notice that it's that it's done anything. But the one thing that I found with the Pixel Buds A that I didn't have on the on the 2020 model is this seems to be a little bit too sensitive and I've tried it with different phones. So if I bang some pots and pans in my kitchen, it's going to increase the volume dramatically. If I'm at the gym, someone drops a weight, it's going to increase the volume dramatically as well. I found that it was a little more subtle on the last year's model. But again, that can all be fixed with a software update or just basically turn it off. It's up to you. Now here are the touch controls. You can have those on or have them off. It really is up to you. But why would you want to turn off touch controls? In-ear detection, as I mentioned, you take it out of your ear, it's going to pause the music, put it back, it's going to start up again. Now what I like about it too is you get software updates and Google has updated the other version quite, quite often. AAC codec, so you're going to get some nice sound once again. You also have this case that's going to provide up to 24 hours of additional charge. The buds do last about five to six hours in my testing, depending on the volume level and depending on this and upon that. So you do get an extra 24 hours with the case here, so definitely something super awesome. Another thing that's really awesome, guys, if you put the buds in the case for about 15 minutes, you're going to get about 180 minutes of music playback or 90 minutes of talk time. So if you're in a pinch and you just need to charge them up really quickly, put them back in the case and you're good to go. This is the indoor test of the Google Pixel Buds A. I'm in my office. So I have a ceiling fan going on. So I just want to let you know what the quality is like if you're just indoors and you take a phone call. So let me know what you think about the indoor test. Now let's move on to the outdoor test. This is the outdoor sound test of the brand new Pixel Buds Series A. I've got a lot of noise in the background. Let me know what you think about the call quality. Now on my end, I could always hear the caller perfectly fine, but let me know what this sounds like to you guys again. This is the outdoor test of the brand new Pixel Buds Series A. But the great thing about these buds and really what's kept these buds in my ear, even though I had so many issues with them, is having the Google Assistant in your ear is something I personally enjoy. So you can say the OKG keyword and it's going to activate. You can tell Google to lower or raise the volume that way. And you can ask it to read your text messages or what's the weather or just anything else you do with the Google Assistant. I really like them. I think they're an excellent value. Again, at $99, you get an awesome sounding earbud. You get the Google Assistant in your ear as well. And it's just an overall very pleasing sound that I can recommend. No matter if you just listen to podcasts, if you're that NPR type of person, this is going to be a great bud for you. But let me know what you think about them down in the comments below. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. They're about the same size as my other Pixel Buds here. You can see that there. It